Hi everyone, Tim Brown. Welcome back to my Apple Podcast. There happens to be a new power photo editor out for iOS, and it's called Leonardo. I'm going to use this episode to cover all the features. As you can see, Leonardo is made for the iPhone and the iPad, so I thought I would show you both interfaces. Let me go ahead and launch both applications on the iPhone and the iPad. Let's begin with the basic user interface. This is what you're greeted with when you first open the application. On the top left is an editing tool for editing your current projects. You can retrieve projects from iTunes. So if you have projects that you imported into iTunes, you can retrieve them from there. There are some great video tutorials. So there's a question mark when you tap on that. You see here you have a lot of options for getting more information about how to use the app, uh, specifically video tutorials. And there are tons of them. All of these videos are available on YouTube and they're very helpful and help you learn all the new features. I'm gonna hopefully cover most of them during this episode. And then there's the plus symbol. That's where you begin your project. Also, you see the video tutorials thumbnail. That's another way to access the video tutorials as well. So let's click on the plus symbol and begin a new project. You see here when you tap on the plus symbol, you have several options. You can import an image from the photo library, from your clipboard. You can take a picture with your camera or just simply insert an empty image. So let's go ahead and do the latter since that's not something I typically do. And you, here you see you're given the option to set up your project with a certain resolution size. I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with that and use the color white and just go ahead and just click accept to begin. Next, let's examine Leonardo in the project view. Here's what the layout looks like when you open the application on your iPhone and iPad and as you can see, all the icons are identical on both applications, just arranged slightly differently with sizes varying because of the different screen sizes. On the top left, you see that we have a home button that will send you back to the original home page that we just started with. There's also the return button that's pretty common on most applications. This is where you save your project. And what's really nice is that you have the option to save as a JPEG or as a PNG, or you can save it as a Photoshop file. You can save it to Photos, Clipboard, you can email it, or save it to iTunes. Likewise, when you, if you were to save it as a PNG, you'll notice you have all of those options except for Clipboard. You cannot save a PNG to your clipboard, but you can save it to all the other areas. And if you just decide to save it as a Photoshop file, you'll see you only have the option to email it or save to iTunes file sharing. And that's pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna continue by examining all of the features that come with Leonardo, and there are quite a few of them. We're gonna begin with layers. To import a new image into your project or new layer, there's a plus symbol on the bottom left. Select the plus symbol and you have the option to import an image from your photo library, clipboard, take an image with your camera, or insert another empty layer. We're going to go ahead and import a photo from the library. And I have a photo on both the iPhone and iPad that I took while I was in Rome. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that same photo into both projects. You can also copy an existing layer. The icon that's located right above the plus symbol enables you to do that. So on both devices, I'm gonna go ahead and select that icon. You see I have a dialog window to copy that layer. Let's go ahead and copy it. And it takes a few seconds to copy depending on how large the file is. And once it's done copying, you then select the icon right next to it or adjacent to that one where it's paste the clipboard. We're gonna go ahead and paste. And that's now I'm gonna add another layer to our layers column. 
But we're going to go ahead and undo that because I only need one image for the moment. The next tool is the transform tool. So I'm going to go ahead and select the transform tool on the bottom on the iPhone and on the left on the iPad. Essentially what this tool enables you to do is to resize your image. You'll see that there are little markers along the side that give you the indication that you can do just that. So I'm just going to grab the corners of the photo on my iPad. You see I can rotate it around. I can also drag the corners to reduce the size. And as you can see they pretty much work the same way on the iPhone as the iPad. You notice on the iPhone version that the layers view will disappear occasionally and there's a little arrow on the right you just tap that to bring the layers view back. My main objective here is to enlarge the image to, to cover the entire canvas of my screen. Since you may have noticed I had a slight white border on the edge of my photo and I want to cover that. Next let's explore the use of filters. As you can see, as you scroll up and down, you'll see that you have quite a range of options. You have exposure contrast, hue saturation, color vibrance, grayscale, improved clarity. Let's go ahead with improved clarity. And we're going to go ahead and use the slider to make adjustments there. As you can see, it's brightening up my image a little bit and just bringing out the images a little bit more. You can hit the adjust icon along the bottom to remove or return that those controls in case you need to see the whole screen and then once you're satisfied you just hit the check symbol to add your changes and you can continue to explore the tools that way you can also use say a Gaussian blur if you want to add a blur effect to your images so I would encourage you to explore all the different options they're available, there are quite a few. Okay, now let's move from the filters tool to the effects tool. And you can just browse through all the different presets that are available. You'll notice that you'll have quite a number to choose from. You also have some gray presets, which are really nice. These are monochromatic options. So if you want to keep your photo relatively monochromatic, you can choose that as an option. And I actually like those, so I'm going to go ahead and save those changes to both the iPhone and iPad. Another feature that I really like are light leaks. And light leaks basically enable you to add different light leak effects to your photo. It's really cool, and you can control the amount of the effect that you want to add just by using a slider along the bottom. Click the check symbol when you're done. And another really cool feature that I like is this feature called crayons. It gives your photo a very cartoon, almost print-like effect. So I'm gonna use the slider to go back and forth. It basically controls how strong the blacks are going to appear in the photo. I absolutely love this effect, but I would encourage you to explore all the options that you have. As you can see, there are quite a few. Next, let's move on to the tools icon. The tools icon is represented by the crop symbol that's on the menu bar. And you'll see when that's selected, you have a wide range of options to choose from, including cropping your photos, straightening, flipping or rotating, cloning, adding text, a range of options. So let's go ahead and, and pursue a few of them. I'm going to actually, before I do that, go back to layers and import another image. I'm going to add a photo on top of the current layer, which is going to then add yet another layer to our project. So I'm going to go to photo library on both devices. And I'm going to bring in a figure to place on top. Okay, so you can see I actually placed the same figure on top of both layers. And what I want to do is edit out the background 
And I'm going to do that in a bit when I scroll down to the masking tool. But let's first explore the tool options. Okay, with the tool options selected, you'll see that there are a range of tools to choose from. There is the crop tool, straighten, flip, rotate, clone, add text, edit text, paintbrush, edit brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, and scale. Let's explore some of those options. Let's begin by just selecting the crop tool. And I'm going to do this on both applications. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and crop out because I really only want the figure out of this photo anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and position my crop so that I'm just encasing the figure that I want to add. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let me hit the check symbol. We've now cropped our photo. And we can now see some of the other layer behind. Uh, let's also explore other options like flip rotate. Now with flip rotate selected, you get a menu and you can now choose your options. For example, the horizontal arrow on the bottom, you could just flip back and forth. If you want to rotate or flip that way, you can also flip this way from right to left and from top to bottom. So those are the options you have with the flip rotate. You can clone, you can add text, you can edit text. Uh, let's explore linear, linear gradient, which is an option that I really like. So with linear gradient selected, you see I've only, I've only selected the layer that I'm on. And on my iPod, iPad option, you'll see that I already have the overlay blend mode selected, which enables the figure to come through. It's not selected on my iPhone, so I'm going to go ahead and go from normal to overlay. And you see that's what gives me that effect. You don't have to use these colors. You can actually go in and customize what colors you want the gradient to be by just tapping on, on the icons and then exploring the menu of options that you have. And here you can just run your finger along the color range or options that you have. And then when you're done, just click the check symbol. Okay, so now with the top layer selected, I'm now going to go to the masking tool on the bottom right and then the bottom left on the iPad. It looks just like a mask. And we're going to go ahead and, and choose the wand tool along the top to remove the background. And you do that by just simply tapping on any area in the background to remove it. Now you have to be careful with this because once you start doing this, you'll start to notice that certain areas in the foreground image will start to become extracted. Why? Because it's essentially pulling some of the same colors from the background that's in the foreground. But we can clean that up in a bit. So for example, you see at the top left there are three different options that you can have. You slap on this icon, you add a new mask layer. Here you can remove mask layer and that's what we want. The one on the right, we want to remove mask layer. That will restore all the areas that have been erased. So with the brush tool, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, and I'm just going to basically paint back in what I took out. And it's a little easier on the iPad than it is on the iPhone, which is a lot smaller. But you kind of get the idea. And I'm not going to be perfect with this, just so you you see how the tool works. Okay, let's see what I can do on the iPhone here. I'm going to go ahead and pinch and zoom with two fingers, and that's how you always do this when using the iPhone or iPad. You could just simply pinch and zoom. I'm going to use the brush tool here and just begin painting back in what I took out. So I was able to clean up and restore the areas that I took away from the face. And then I can go back to add mask layer and then resume taking away using the wand tool. Okay, and now we can go back to our transform tool to reposition where we want the figure to go. Now as I'm repositioning the figure here, I also want to flip rotate this as well. So I'm going to go back and forth between the transform tool and the crop tool where I can also find the flip rotate tool. So using the flip rotate tool I actually want to flip her around 
so that she's facing the other direction. So I'm going to do that on both the iPhone and iPad. Because compositionally, this looks a whole lot better than it does when she's facing the other way. And I'm going to go back to the transform tool on both the iPhone and iPad and then proceed by repositioning until I'm satisfied with where I want her within the composition. So I think this compositionally is much better. I'm going to move her around on the iPhone here. Okay, and we're set. And there you have it. I've used basically a few features from every tool on the menu bar just so you can get an idea of what is possible with Leonardo. It's a fantastic application. Okay, I really like the final result that I've achieved on both the iPhone and the iPad, so I'm going to now go ahead and save my project. And as you do that by selecting the return key in the top left corner, I can choose a JPEG or PNG. I'm going to choose a PNG on both. And then choose Photos as my destination. And I now saved a photo from both project to my photo library. And once that's done, you then click the home button and it takes you back to the main menu. And that's Leonardo. It's $1.99 in the App Store. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Mobile Podcast. My name is Tim Brown. Check me out next time.